Hare Gaura Chandraya Radhikaya Tadaraya Krishna Krishna Bhaktaya Tara Bhaktaya I'm first of all offering millions and millions of Dandavat Pranams unto the lotus feet of my most beloved Gurudev Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Asto Tara Zarashishimani Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Once again, millions and millions But they know and the same again millions and millions of times unto the lotus feet of our most beloved Nityalila Prabhishna Om Astol Tadasada Shishima Shila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada and today I'm offering my Dandabhat Pranams unto all the Vaishnavas present especially by especially to Pujapad Prang Prayojan Prabhu and all the Vaishnavas who have come with him on this glorious Prakama today. Completely glorious. The sun is even in its glory today. <laughs> so we have come to Swananda, which means extreme bliss. Swananda. Swa. Own bliss. Swananda Sukada. Swananda Sukada. Swa Sopsane. Hada is place. So this most extreme, beautiful place <coughs> is Kunj. Swananda Sukada Kunj has its origin in Radha Kund, of course. It's the place of Ananda Manjari. So this is also a replica, not a replica, it's non different. The same as that same Swananda Sukada Kunj and that eternal Sevak Kamala Manjari is here rendering service to his divine Ishtadev Shimati Radhika under the guidance of Ananda Manjari and Lalita Devi Sakhi. So this is where we come by immense fortune. It's remarkable how. Kamala Manjari. This is the Lotus of Sri Radha. When there was a gap in the current coming from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it was not propagated powerfully. There was no individual Acharya practically for a hundred years since the time of Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. There was a darkness amongst the populace because the current was not being propagated powerfully. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur himself, when he decided to um, take an interest in Vaishnavism, he could not even find a Chaitanya Charitamrita. However, he discovered that and all the um, Vaishnava Tattvas and Siddhantas manifested practically unlimitedly from his pen, his powerful pen. He filled that void with a monumental amount of educational material, we can say. And his glorious son, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, picked up that um, treasure 
and propagated it to the world. We cannot ever praise or glorify Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur enough. We can hear his glories every single day. He's given us the entire pathway from Shraddha to Prem and Prem to Mahabhav. Particularly in the most popular Jaiva Dharma. This now is popular all over the world. Thanks to my beloved Gurudev, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, who put so much effort into publishing this in English and in um, Hindi. He translated this from Bengali into Hindi and he accredits his ability to learn Bengali from doing that translation. Jaiva Dharma was in fact written in the place you've just come from, Suravi Kunj. Bhakti Vinod Thakur sat for two and a half months and wrote this Jaiva Dharma. Two and a half months. Why take a time? This was just like a current flowing through him. He was that divine instrument. But even more beautifully is now all of his predictions and prophecies are coming to fruition. Bhakti Vinotak will become so happy when he sees you all come and sit in front of him. This is the samadhi, the full samadhi. When Bhakti Vinod Thakur left his body in Calcutta in 1914, his son Lalit Prashad cremated that body. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was most disappointed. He immediately went to Calcutta and took those ashes. And he brought them here and installed them with full samadhi. So we honor this as Bhakti Vinod Thakur's complete samadhi. At the yoga pit, there is the Pushpa Samadhi and so many other places, but here is actually Bhakti Vinod Thakur's Mahasamadhi. And here is the environment where he wrote so many wonderful scriptures for our benefit. Who else was he writing? He was writing for us to be inspired in Navadvi to understand Gupta Vrindavan. Mahaprabhu had three desires to fulfill. As, or Krishna had three desires to fulfill. Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kitrishovanaiva Swadhyena Dhuta Madhurima Kitrishova Madhya. Sokyam Kasyam Mad Anubhavita and Bhavadya Samajini Sachi Garbo Sindhu Harindu. These three desires of Mahaprabhu of Krishna were manifested here in Navadvi. Who could understand Krishna? 
Maybe some Siddha Purushas. But no one could really understand this relationship that Krishna had with the gopis. So Mahaprabhu is coming as Odarya with his Odarya Shakti to open that to the world. He is truly Prem Purushottam. But how would we know this? Without the taco. Without Srila Bhakti no taco, we would be in complete ignorance of this. We owe him everything. Truly. And he's literally the foundation of all of our practices with so many bhajans. He was confronting two great difficulties. He was confronting the misconceptions of Sahajya groups on one side and the British Raj on the other side that was deeply influencing the young men of India at that time. So Bhakti Vinotako held the most responsible position of a high court magistrate. His whole personality commanded the utmost respect from all the Britishers. So he was breaking this idea that the Indian culture was just archaic or something tribal. They thought it was primitive. But Bhakti Vinotako, my Gurudev said one time, we were presenting him the copy of Jayadharma, and you'll see on the cover there's a picture of Bhakti Vinotako with a um, like a frill around him. My Gurudev, when I showed him, he jumped. He said, "Oh, Bhakti Vinotako is so grave. Why have you put this around the edge?" <laughs> and I said, "Oh, Gurudev, this is supposed to look like a locket." Like a jewel, like Bhakti Vinotakur is inside the jewel. <laughs> but his mood of gravity, this, this personality who never lied in his life, who never deviated from Dharma in his life, Bhakti Vinotakur. When you have this kind of background, naturally you have this powerful Shakti. So, so many, particularly Navadvi Bhav Taranga, which I believe Pranji is um, reading as you go around, talking on. But here, Bhakti Nautako literally reveals the Swarup of the Dharma. If we don't appreciate on a significant level, how here, for example, is utterly non-different to Nandagaon. When you come in, you see, first of all, who do you see? Right here at the doorway. Who is this? Who is it? Tell me. It's Nandishwara. 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 Just as when you go to Nandagaon, who do you see on top of the hill? <laughs> Not different. And now recently they just built a newer temple so that when you first come in or when you go out, don't forget him. 
Don't rush out the gate. We all need his Kripa. He is there as this is Nandagaon entirely. So as the Swarup of the Dharm is revealing itself in the heart of Srila Bhakti Vinotako, he is simultaneously revealing it to us throughout his writings. Our object in life is to appreciate this. Our object in life is to endeavor for bhajan. If we don't have bhajan, what do we have? It requires regularity of sadhana initially. And that will blossom into bhava bhakti. And the guidance of guru. Without guru, nothing. So Bhakti Vinotaka is the embodiment of Sri Guru. All the teachings of Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, Srila Baladevi Dibhushan, all the Goswamis, Bhakti Vinotaka is called the seventh Goswami. Yes. He uncovered this dam. When you leave, you go up these stairs and you see the veranda and you look across the Jalangi and you can see the yoke pit. And from the, this yoke pit was where Bhakti Vinotako saw the illumination, the um, uh, place of Nimai's birth, the place of Mahaprabhu's birth. Without having the location of the birthplace, how could Bhakti Vinotako establish the authenticity of Mahaprabhu's teachings. You you must have, like in Mathura, we have the Janmastan. Without, unlike in Christianity, you have Jerusalem, etc. You must have the birthplace of this great personality. So without that discovery, then it will weaken uh, Bhakti Vinotako's uh, efforts to implant the authenticity of Mahaprabhu's teachings and gifts to this world. So he revealed the yoga pit and also he manifested his divine son in Puri to carry on his mission. Without Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, his mission would not have continued. The mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would not have continued. So these two essential gifts that he uncovering of the yoga pit and the gift of his divine son are what we are eternally grateful for Bhakti Vinotaku to. But even more than this, Bhakti Vinotaku can give Gopi Prem. You want Gopi Prem? No. <laughs> we want service to Sri Radha. My Guru would always say when we were taking our Sankalpa, now, say after me, 
I want to be a Palya Dasti of Srimad Radharani. And this is the overwhelming impression that our beloved Bhakti Vinod Thakur is impressing within our consciousnesses. Srila Gorky Shodas Babaji is also here. Srila Gorky Shodas Babaji is His Mahasamadhi is in the Chaitanya Mat where you were already. And here, I don't know that you all went to take darshan of Gaur Gadadha. These are the deities that were installed by Bhakti Vinodhaku directly. Siddhanta Saraswati continued that worship. So here we can talk all day about But your time is limited. We are only in this material world for a short time. <laughs> we have to grab as many jewels as we can on the way. So thank you very much for listening. Any glorification of Bhakti Vinod Thakur is our juice, is our nourishment. So I'm offering all um, uh, hopes that your parikrama will be utterly successful because of the current, essentially, coming from Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ki Jai Bhakti Siddhartha Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada Ki Pushpad, 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 Pushp